Hello, and welcome to another episode of Mr. Kung Has Problems. Tonight we're working on Module 5, Lesson 23, and tonight we are adding and multiplying unit fractions to build fractions that are greater than 1. And we'll be using visual models to do that today. So let's take a look at a couple of problems from tonight's homework and see what we can figure out. Let's take a look at problem number three. I'm actually going to skip over the first couple of problems uh, because I don't think they lend themselves that well to being done here in an online format. But let's take a look at number three. We are going to do the following. We are going to multiply, as shown below, draw a number line to support your answer. So if we look at A, we're given the, the equation, I'm sorry, the number sentence, six times one-third. And if we sort of look what, at what they've done, since we're using thirds, they decide that they're going to group the thirds together in packs of three, because three-thirds would make a whole. So they have three times a third to get us up to one, and three times a third to get us up to two. And, that, and then they translate that here. Six times one-third is the same as two times three-thirds, right? This is three-thirds, and this is three-thirds. So that's two copies of three-thirds. And two times three-thirds is, in fact, the same as just two. So let's take a look at problem C and see if we can do a similar bit of work with this problem. Let's see. Problem C says, let's see, eight times one-fourth. So we're going to do a number line, of course. And let's see. We're going to do that number line out this way. And let's see. We'll do our usual zero and, let's say, one and let's say 2, and one more up through 3, and let's see, 8, and it looks like we're working in fourths, so it looks like we're going to need to divide up each one of our, oops, sorry, each one of our parts of our number line here into fourths. So let's see, we'll go like that, that gives us fourths there, that gives us fourths there, and maybe fourths here. Awesome. Now, 8 times 1 fourth. 8 times 1 fourth. Well, how many fourths make up 1? Let's see. It would be 4 fourths, right? We can see that here. 1, 2, 3, 4. So, let's see. 8 would be, let's see, 1 hop over here to the 1. That's 4 times 1 fourth. Let's see. We're going to take 8 total, so we can take another one, right? Okay, let's see. More like that. And that's 4 more times 1 fourth. 4 1 fourths. So we can... And that's all of them, right? We've gone eight, and this is four and four. So we've done our eight hops, right, in sets of four fourths. So let's go ahead and draw our radar number sentence below that. That would be the same as eight times one fourth is the same as, let's see, we did two big hops, right? So that's two times four fourths, right? Each of those hops, one, two, each of them went over one, two, three, four, four fourths. So Twice, we made hops all the way to four-fourths. So that's two times four-fourths, and that's the same as, as we can see in our diagram, two. Excellent. So we got this to, odd, oddly, we got to the exact same place as we did up here in problem 3A. Six one-thirds is the same as eight one-fourths. Interesting. All right, let's take a look at one more problem in tonight's homework. Let's take a look at problem number four. We are going to multiply as shown below. Write the product as a mixed number. Draw a number line to support your answer. And if we look at number at 4a, it says, what will we do with six copies of one-third? And it looks to me from the diagram like it's saying, well, let's see, three copies of a third would get us up to one. And we could fit in another three copies of a third to get up to two. And at this point, we've done six copies of a third. But we're asked to do seven, so we have to do that last little one-third here at the end. So let's see if we can do that with 4C. 11 groups of 1 fifth. Oh boy, 1 fifth. I'm going to draw a bigger number line because we might need it. Let's see, we're going to go from 0 to 1 to 2 to way out here would be 3. And we're going to divide each of these segments, right, each of these segments into five parts because we're working in fifths. So let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Awesome. Let's see if we can do a similar thing to what we've done before. Let's see. Each of our hops will, will, be, will go across five-fifths. So let's see. This first hop whoop, up to one will be five times one-fifth. Let's see. But we need 11 eventually, so we can definitely fit in another hop. So let's see. Whoop. Let's go up here. That's five more times one-fifth. And at this point, we've done five here and five here, so we only have one left. So our last little hop is just going to be this tiny one, right? One-fifth. And let's see if we can express that in a number sentence. So we're asked to do 11 times one-fifth is the same as, let's see, we had our two big hops, right? So that's two times five-fifths 
plus one more, right? Because we had our two big hops, five-fifths each, right? And that's this part. But then we had this other little one at the end, so we have to add on one-fifth. And that means that we're going to have the same as two plus one-fifth, or we can just say two and one-fifth. So it looks like by doing all these hops, right, 11 of these hops, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, it looks like we've gotten to two and one-fifth. And that looks like the right thing from our diagram. One, two holes, and one-fifth. Excellent. Well, with that, I hope you have better luck on your rest of your homework, and I hope you join me the next time on Mr. Kung Has Problems. Good night.